Today's lesson is going to be all about array tables in Roblox. To get started, let's go to service script service and add a script. To declare an array table, you declare it like this, local, and the variable name, let's call it a, equals to two curly brackets. So now a is an array table. To initialize the array, you're going to do this. In, instead of having two empty curly brackets, you can put numbers in there. For example, 1, 5, 7. So now my array has three elements. The first element has a value of 1. The second element has a value of 5. And the third element has the value of 7. I can refer to those elements like this. For example, if I print a, and I use the square brackets now, a1, then I'm printing the, the value of the first element, which is this one. It's going to print 1. If I do print a, which is the name of my array, and again, the square brackets, 2, then I'm printing the second element of my array A. So this is the first element. This is the second element. So first element is 1. The value of the second element in my array is 5. And I can do the same thing here. I can do print A3, which is I'm printing the third element of my array, so it should be 7. And now, let's see what happens if I do print a4. Whoops. Let me fix this. Print a4. Okay, so now I'm printing the fourth element of my array. But if you look up here, my array only has three elements, so there is no fourth element. Let's see what will happen. So here are the results. So when I printed the first element, the value is 1, second element is 5, and the third element is 7. When I try and print the fourth element, which does not exist, because I only have three elements in my array, it gave me the value of nil. Now what can you store inside an array element? The answer is, you can store anything you can store inside a variable, inside an array element. For example, let's declare a new table, b equals to, and let's say the first element contains books, the second element contains a boolean value, true, and the third element contains pencils. Now if I go and I say if b2, which is the second element of the, the b table, the b array, then print b3. Let's play the test. And here it is. It printed pencils. The reason it printed pencil because uh, my b2 is true so if true then print b3 b3 is pencil now how do you change the value of an element so for example i want to change the second element of array a i'm going to do a2 equals to and i'm just going to assign it to a new value for example 22 now, how do you add a new element to the array, to an existing array? So now I have an, an existing array here of three elements, right? I want to add a fourth element. So I'm going to say A4, which doesn't exist yet, but I'm going to create it by assigning it 
a value, let's say 66. Now what if I skip an element? So the, the arrays, the element has to go in sequential order, right? So you got to start with a1, a2, a3, this is a4. Now, instead of doing a5, I'm going to do a6. Equals to, let's say, 77. Now, let's print it out and let's see how it looks. I'm going to do print array A. And here it is. Let's take a look. So my first element is 1, my second element is 22, which is correct because I I modified the second element to 22. My third element is 7, my fourth element is 66, which is correct. I don't have a fifth element and my sixth element is 77, which is correct. Now it would be interesting to know what is the fifth element. So I'm going to do a print a5. And there it is. My fifth element is nil. So if an element does not exist and you try and retrieve the value of that element, you're going to get nil. Next, I'm going to show you how to assign a function to an element of the array. So let's declare a function, local function, and let's call it by, and it's just going to print out a string, goodbye. Now, to, to assign a function to an element of the array, you do it this way. Um, let, let me see which element we should assign it to. Uh, let's say we assign it to uh, the element number 6, or maybe even 7. Let, let's create a new element. So we're going to say a element number 7 equals to, and we're going to say equal to the name of the element, which is by. And you do not need the uh, parentheses here. But when you use the function, you use a7, which is the element of the array that contains the function. You'll need to put the parentheses here. Let's take a look. Um, before we take a look, let me remove these first. So that it wouldn't have so many things over here. Okay, now let's take a look. Okay, so script line number seven, it printed goodbye. And the reason we got that is because we used the element, uh, element seven of the array and element seven contains the function by in it. So it just executed this function, whatever inside the function gets executed. All right, so the next question is, how do you iterate through an array? Here I have an array of three elements and I added an extra element. So it has four elements altogether, but actually um, it has five elements, except the fourth element is not defined, so it's nil. So uh, element one, two, three is here. Element 4 is missing, it's nil, and element 5 has the uh, value of 77. Now to iterate through that array, I'm going to do 4 i um, equals to 1, which is the first element of the array, comma, and I'm going to go to pound a. So a is the name of the array, pound a is going to give me the length of the array. Now, if this array uh, has five elements, and if there's no nil in it, uh, pound A should be five. But in this case, there is a nil 
in the array. So let's see what it's going to return for pound A. So for i equals 1 to pound A do, and I'm just going to print out, um, I'm going to print out i, which is the index of the array, and a i, which is the value inside that array element. Let's play. And it printed only three elements. Let's take a look here. So it printed the first, second, and third index. So it printed one, five, and seven. When it hits the fourth element, the fourth element is nil. It stops. So it it only counted um, array A as an array of three elements. It does not count the nil, the the, the element where the uh, value is nil and anything after that uh, it gets dropped it gets cut off now if we go ahead and do this assign a value to element number, f number 4 of the array then it should print the entire array 33 let's say and there it is so it printed one, two, three is one, five, seven, right? Element number four is 33 and element number five is 77. Another way to iterate through the array is to use the four I pair, I pairs loop. So I'm gonna say four index comma value in i pairs and then I put the name of the array in there do right and here I'm just gonna print out the uh, index and the value so basically for every element of the array A, it's gonna return an index value pair, right? The index is gonna be one, two, three, four, right? And the value is whatever contained inside that element. It's gonna be one, five, seven, 33, 77. Let's take a look. And there it is. So um, I got index one, value of one, two is five, three is seven, right? And then index four, I have 33, and index number five, I have 77. So this four in I pairs, it works almost identical to uh, what we had before when we used the pound A for loop, right? Um, let, let's take a look at something else. I'm going to remove, let me stop first. I'm going to remove the fourth element. So I'm making it nil. Remember with the pound, with, with using the pound sign followed by the array name, it stops after, after the third element, right? And let's, let's see how this one is doing. The four in I pairs. So same as the pound sign, the four pound sign before that we used, this one stops at the third element. As soon as it hits the nil value, it stops. Now there's another way for you to get past the nil value, and that would be to use the four in pairs loop. Let's play again. And there it is. So you have index number one, two, three, which is has the value of one five seven, right? And then it skips the index number four, which is nil, but then it doesn't stop. With in pairs, it's gonna keep on going. It just skips the nil, but it keeps going. So the index number five has the number seven seventy seven in it. Now, in general, it is recommended that you use for in i pairs for arrays and for in pairs 
for a dictionary. In fact, with dictionaries, uh, you cannot even use for in i pairs. It can only work with for in pairs. Um, but you'll learn that in the next lesson. The next lesson is going to be all about dictionaries. And then after that, we're going to do some multi-dimensional arrays. And then we're going to look into table functions. All right. But anyway, so this is our lesson for today. And it's all about arrays in Roblox.